apologize it's been a little while since we filmed a, a YouTube video um, we haven't had a whole lot of new stuff come through the shop and it's been the holiday season so we've been busy with production but um, I've been asked many times on social media to do a comparison between the Honey Badger and the Rattler. Uh, we finally got a Rattler. This is a pistol configuration. Um, we are just waiting for the uh, for Sig Sauer to release the Rattler side folding stock, and then we'll file a Form 2 on our Rattler and SBR it, so it'll also be an SBR. Um, but as of right now, I didn't want to put an MCX stock on it. I really wanted the new skeletonized stock. Anyway, so... I don't really feel that these guns should be compared. Um, the comparison should really be between the 6.75 inch uh, Sig Sauer MCX 300 Blackout, not the Rattler. But everyone's been saying, what do you like better? Compare these guns. So, I mean, this is not really a fair comparison because, um, you know, this is they are different guns. Um, but because they're in a kind of similar configuration, similar size right now, um, people really wanted to uh, see comparisons. So anyway, um, I mean, first thing to note right out the gate, the Rattler weighs a ton. Uh, it does weigh a lot more because it does have this pistol brace, um, you know, uh, extendable stock here. It's got the button on top. It's got a two position stock. I mean, this is super heavy. The mounting system here is heavy. The rubber is heavy. This whole stock system is super heavy. This is polymer and aluminum. This weighs nothing. So once I replace this with the skeletonized uh, stock, it will be a little bit lighter. But for the um, for this video, it will it is adding a ton of weight. So that folds up. It's got that there too. With another sling point. It's got two QD marks, uh, QD mounting points here, and an M-lock handguard. Uh, this also has an M-lock handguard. It has a single point uh, QD mark here, or a point here. Um, this comes with the full length handguard on it. Um, I went to Q and I picked it up and I, I grabbed the short one. The reason being is the full length, the, the real good, the good part about the full length is if you want to put a laser device and you have a, a larger, um, sight picture, if you put your iron, backup irons on it, that's the benefit of having the full length rail. The cons to the full length rail, and I didn't bring it stupidly, is when you have it mounted, um, you can't use the M-lock from the suppressor forward. You can't use the M-lock whatsoever. There's no room for you to fit the M-lock mounting pieces to it. And if you grip the front of the handguard up here, uh, you'll also contact the can, and the can does get very hot, so you can also burn yourself. So I don't really, other than putting on some laser devices and some backup sights, if you want to go hog hunting and uh, or hunting in general, you want to do some other things with it. Um, it does have an application for that longer handguard, but um, them, I just don't understand why it has M-Lock other than just to look super sexy. Uh, but it, the M-Lock with the can on really serves no purpose, uh, in, in our opinion. And then because the M-Lock is staggered here around the barrel nut, you realistically only have this, uh, this piece here, and, and, and then these two sections here as well and underneath. But this is useless, this is useless, this is useless, you know, et cetera. Um, the M-locks on here, there's only two here on either side, two on the bottom. They are in a position where you can mount whatever you want on those locations. Again, it's kind of limited, so if you, if you add up what's available here, they have two extra M-locks on the, on, the, uh, on the angles, this doesn't. Um, this gun with a suppressor on still weighs less than this without the suppressor on. So weight is a huge factor. Um, if you are, uh, let's say you had the can off and you were PDWing this, you could single point it under your arm. It would be very light. It wouldn't fatigue you throughout the day. Uh, this is a much heavier gun. Like it is significantly heavier for its size. Um, I mean, I think this even weighs heavier than an MP5, um, but it's still small. And once we get rid of this, the side folder package would only stick it out about this far out the rear of the gun, it would fold on itself and it would be even smaller of a package, conceals better in a bag. Um, this fits in my um, Grey Ghost gear bag very well. This does not fit at all. And I have to take the can off. This is also a direct thread um, can. This is our Honey Badger can, Honey Badger. And then this is the SIG SRD 762. 
uh, can. And this is a quick QD can. If you're in a hurry, you can throw it on loosely. So even though it's loose and rattling, um, because the uh, muzzle device is on a tapered shoulder and then this is tapered, um, it keeps this pretty concentric. So even if this is loose, you will not have a baffle strike. So, you know, I can see this being a much better op, you know, application for tier one guys. If they're shooting this and they gotta go retreat to cover, throw a can on, they're in a rush, you know, you throw this can on a couple quick turns, even if it's loose, it's still gonna run fine. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a gas piston system. It's got an adjustable gas block here. Um, the minus sign on it is super or super suppressed. And then the plus sign on, uh, well, this is the minus side. The plus side that we're just showing is um, suppressed uh, subsonic. So it does have an adjustable gas block. This does, um, you know, this is DI. So this is direct impingement. Um, some pros, this gun takes down really easily. Um, it takes down really, really easily. You can pop your pins out here. Um, and then it slides apart. You can remove that and break it open and you can uh, service the weapon um, hinging on the front pin. So that's super cool. Um, it's got fully ambidextrous controls, ambidextrous bolt release. Um, well, not ambidextrous bolt release. It's got the enhanced bolt release and ambidextrous mag release. Um, this has ambidextrous selector controls, magazine release only on one side, and just a standard mil spec paddle. Um, this paddle is completely exposed, so you can bump it against gear. This one has a shielded paddle, so it makes it harder to uh, bump it off gear and um, accidentally drop your bolt if that's not the intention. Putting this on a table is not going to cause it to uh, drop the bolt. Um, they both have ambidextrous, they both have ambi, um, charging handles. Um, I like this charging handle better. It's a little bit more compact. Uh, this one has a Raptor, a Radian Raptor. I personally haven't had the greatest luck with, uh, the Raptor charging handles in the past. I've had them destroy my upper receivers on guns that are a little bit over gassed. Um, it's not that case for this gun. Um, this gun has a clear anodizing coating. You can see it gets really dirty really quick. Um, I don't mind dirty guns. Um, it's a little difficult to clean. I've cleaned the magwell quite a bit and the stains stay. But again, I don't really care if the gun's dirty. Um, you can tell that there's different grades of aluminum uh, slightly. Uh, you can see that this is a clear anodizing. So it has this gold look to it. You can see the upper receiver is a little darker. Uh, this kind of reminds me of like the scars, how, you know, there'll be a couple different colors of green and OD and flat dark earth on their flat dark earth gun. So it does give it character. Um, <clears throat> so this gun comes with Surefeed 30 round mags. This gun comes with a Lancer 30 round. Um, for backpack carry, I like to use the Surefeed 20s. Here's the problem though. Surefeed 20 goes right into this perfectly, right? This gun was designed to take Surefeed mags. Well, here's a little difference here. The Surefeed mag 20 rounder has a different feed lip design than the 30 rounder, right? You put this 20 rounder in, it doesn't go into the gun. It doesn't go in at all. Even if you lock the bolt to the rear, this is not going in. So it is recommended to run aluminum Surefeed mags, but it doesn't go in the gun. So, um, I'm sure there's some other aluminum mags out there that has a little bit different feed lip design that'll work, but this gun explicitly comes with sure feeds and it doesn't take 20s. So that was a total bummer. Um, so, and I was running uh, PMAG 556 20 rounders. It doesn't really like those that much. Um, so I'm gonna try the 300 blackout 20 rounds. Um, trigger, this comes with the American, um, American, American Trigger Company, American Trigger Corp, I forget. They're gonna hate me when I <laughs> butcher their name. Um, super good dudes over there. That trigger's pretty cool. Um, it's a little, it's got a little bit of uptake. It's a little bit different if you're running other single stage triggers. It's just a little bit different, but it's a fun, it's a fun trigger to shoot. Um, this flared magwell is super accentuated, so it does help you feed um, mags better. This one doesn't have as much as a flare. 
but you should have muscle memory at this point. Um, trigger guards are really similar. You can see they have very similar geometries. They're running the same Magpul grip. Um, this has a polymer. Um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank on everything today. <laughs> anyway, a, a brass deflector. Um, this one has this very small brass deflector. Um, but I'm running a, a Sig Romeo 4S on this one and an aim point on this one. A um, couple things, when I do put on the SBR stock in this, I have shot this with the SBR stock. It gives you a great cheek weld. Um, it's a good sturdy platform. Uh, the SBR stock that I will be putting on this, you could easily smush watermelons with. It's super sturdy. Um, I don't feel the same about this stock. Um, this stock has a single button here. It's a single position stock, so there's no intermediate position. It's either closed or fully extended. Um, I don't have the same confidence in this stock as the SBR stock that comes on this, uh, the SBR version. Um, this, I do not believe you could bash off of a watermelon and crush skulls with it. Um, obviously, you know, rifles historically have always been designed and built to uh, have pretty sturdy stocks. I mean, even this is pretty sturdy. Um, this is not so much, but this was designed with lightweight in mind. One thing I don't like about this stock in particular, though, is there's no cheek weld. Uh, they do have this portion here that is shielded that looks like it, you can get there, but when you um, put your put your face down to get your sight picture, my chin kind of falls into this area and is kind of uncomfortable. It's more of a chin weld or uh, a face weld, <laughs> a beard weld maybe, um, but it doesn't weld. Uh, it's not really a good platform for your cheek. Um, it's got a single point sling uh, location. It is a you know, it's a non-rotational, so it locks into place there. Um, you can see um, this side, the way it was pressed in, so it's kind of angled there, or angled there. If you go on this side of the firearm, and you plug it in, it's, it's parallel with the gun. So it looks like the, um, you know, it looks like the inserts here aren't parallel. The, the teeth inside aren't parallel. It's not a big deal. Um, like I said, taking this gun down is really easy. You pull the pin out, you can break it open, you can field service it that way. You can pull the front pin out, it breaks apart really easy. Um, the Honey Badger does not take apart so easily. I'll show you real quick how this gun takes apart. There is... And this is what this is the only thing I don't like about the takedown of this is they have this three or 270 degree shielded uh, paddle release here, but here's where it gets wonky. So it's got this thin spring in here that sits on a on a spindle that comes off, and then there's a cup in here that captures it, and then your normal bolt carrier. Um, this only has about 400 rounds through it. It's pretty dirty really quick. A lot of blowback into the system, um, but reassembly. Uh, per the instructions are to slide to get this lined up to slide this in avoiding the hammer and then to gently guide your hands up here trying to hold the spring in place it blows out like that if you're not it, it recommends muzzle down on a table but one thing I found when you start to compress this this paddle is going to scrape here so I do wish that this 360 degree shielding wasn't 360. Um, I wish that this shielding was open. Um, I do wish that this wasn't 270 degree shielding. I, left, I wish they left this side of it open so they let the channel here and maybe it drop in because when you find yourself reassembling this gun and trying to hold this in place, gotta get the peg around there, trying to get that Trying to get it all lined up, my front pin's in the way. Trying to get it all lined up, um, what I noticed is, this is obviously easier to do it this way. <laughs> so I find myself holding it here, you're assembling it, assembling it. Don't force anything <laughs> ever. Where are you hung up on? All right, <laughs> got it seated. But you can see it's under its own spring tension right now. It's trying to get stuck there and I keep 
dragging that paddle down the side of that. So that's probably my biggest qualm with the takedown. I don't mind having to hand hold that spring to keep it captured on the assembly, but I do think the biggest part of reassembly that makes it difficult is the fact that the shielded spot is here. You end up dragging it, leaving witness marks. You know, when you take down a 1911, you carefully shimmy out your takedown pin. Um, this kind of reminds me of that getting witness marks on it. Um, I do like how beautiful this gun is. You know, it's a proprietary upper receiver. Um, it's super milled out. Um, this handguard does not fit normal AR-15s. It is designed specifically to fit the Honey Badger. Um, it's super lightweight. I mean, you know, a, a five-year-old could carry this around, right? Super light. This, this starts to get heavy. Um, but that being said, I'm more confident in, in, in this being a more robust platform. I feel like this can take, you know, I have a few thousand rounds through other Rattlers. I've had fantastic luck with them. They're absolute tanks. You can beat the crap out of them. There's longevity to how robust this system is. Um, it contains the violence of a 300 Blackout. This definitely feels a little bit more dainty, uh, a little bit more delicate. Um, you know, I, I did run this in a class. I did beat it up. Um, one thing I did have issues with with this, from you can tell from one of our previous videos, um, on these mags and other ones, on fully loaded mags, I don't know what it is, but on bolt release, I was having issues with this gun uh, picking up the first or second round off bolt drop. Um, I found myself slingshotting the charging handle to get a little bit more spring tension behind it to pick up the first round. So I did have the top round on a fully topped off mag stopping the bolt carrier. Um, even on the second, uh, if you knock out one round and it's 29 in the mag, I still have that issue. Uh, um, it usually happens when the gun starts to get a little bit more dirty. Uh, but with that being said, cold weather up in here in New Hampshire, gun gets a little dirty. I mean, we're only sitting at 400 rounds and it started to have some failures to feed off bolt drop. So I wasn't too keen on that. Um, you know, obviously you work through it. Um, but that's my reservation about this gun. It's got a, uh, this can's fairly quiet. It's got a three quarter inch uh, wrench here, also back here. So it's easy to take on and off of the wrench. And it has a quarter inch drive here to a uh, quarter inch wrench mark drive to pull this off. So super easy to get your rail off. Pretty easy to get your can off. Not as easy as getting a QD off, but it is a nice, it is a nice lightweight package. It weighs, you know, fathoms lighter than the Rattler, but I do feel that the Rattler is a more robust system. Like I said in the beginning of this video, these really shouldn't be compared. Uh, the 6.75 inch um, MCX with the 10 inch can should probably be the more comparative platform to this, but everyone keeps asking me, uh, you know, Rattler or Honey Badger. Um, you know, we got this at an introductory dealer price. I think we paid like $23.99 for the kit and caboodle with the can. Um, this is a much more expensive gun. The gun itself cost as much as this with a can. So this is a very, very expensive gun compared to this one. Um, this is more inexpensive, you know. This, I think MSRP on this is like $2,600? And then you add a can to it, I mean, you're over three grand. Um, this was only you know, $23.99 for the full setup. So you are saving a lot more money with this platform. But um, if you're, I, I personally feel if you're a hard use person, you're gonna be putting thousands of rounds through your gun, beating the hell out of it. You don't wanna clean it, you don't wanna mess with it. This might be the better gun for you. If you want a more lightweight package, something that you're gonna clean more often, you're gonna maintain more often, you like DI guns over piston, you want the weight savings, you want something that's a little bit lighter weight, um, you know, go with this gun. Um, it's tough to compare these. Uh, seriously, it's really tough to compare these. Um, I just, this is a more robust gun. This is just a little bit daintier. Um, you know, some of the things that I felt were gonna be super functional about this gun didn't come true. The rail, like I said with the m locks earlier, it's not the same feelings, you know, I have about it. But at the end of the day, they're both great guns. Um, I have a blast shooting both of them. And, uh, you know, honestly, I think this comes down to price at the end of the day. This is a more affordable gun. You know, that's what prevented me from purchasing this one for so long was the price. So, um, anyway, 
I think it comes down to you, the viewer, what gun you would rather, uh, you know, what gun you would rather sample. But um, both of them are great. I love them both. Um, you know, I just have some qualms, but with any platform, you're always going to have qualms with it. You know, even my favorite gun, the P10C. I hate the stock trigger. It just happens, you know. So you make your gun the way you like it. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching. Guys, click like, subscribe, check us out, leave a comment. We love to hear feedback.